Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be learning how to replace the differential in a Honda S2000. Now I bought this differential right here from Putty Mod Racing. He's got a private shop based in Florida, specializes in Mazda Miata S2000 modifications. Um, so I'll include some content information for that guy. And this is a 4.44 final drive ratio, whereas the stock final drive ratio is a 4.1. So a little bit more aggressive gearing, which will result in a little bit more wheel torque in each gear. And so we're gonna be basically following the Honda service manual as far as how to remove the differential and then put in a new differential. Uh, but know that you know there may be better ways to do this, there may be quicker ways of doing this. So if there are certain things that I think are worth mentioning uh, throughout this process while I'm doing this, I'll note that and you know perhaps there are other methods of getting this done more quickly. So let's get to work. The first step is to raise the car up onto jack stands. You're going to be spending a lot of time under the car, so it's a good idea to give yourself plenty of room and go ahead and raise both sides. Also remove the rear wheels. Next we're going to remove the exhaust from the catalytic converter back. The service manual doesn't recommend this, but it's going to give you a lot more space to work with a differential. To do this, first we'll need to remove the rear suspension stiffener, which has six bolts holding it in place. There are three nuts connecting to the catalytic converter, which will likely need some penetrating oil to remove. Next, there are five exhaust hangers, one in the center and two at each muffler. Remove the exhaust from all five hangers. If you're doing this alone, it's a good idea to have some towels for the exhaust to drop down on so it isn't damaged when you remove it. Next, we'll be removing the prop shaft. However, if you're going to be replacing the same differential back into the car, you'll want to mark the prop shaft and differential joints so that the differential is installed back the way it was originally. You don't need to fully remove the prop shaft, simply removing from the differential will suffice. To remove the prop shaft, there are six 6mm socket cap screws. These are really easy to strip using a socket wrench, so soak the threaded end in penetrating oil and give it some time to help ease the removal. Then use an impact gun to remove the cap screws, as this helps to prevent stripping the head. With the parking brake released and the vehicle in neutral, you can rotate the prop shaft to access all six bolts. Use the handbrake to prevent the shaft from spinning when needed. Once the six bolts are removed, pull the prop shaft slightly back and allow it to rest on the shaft protector. Next we'll be disconnecting the lower control arm. First remove the cotter pin from the castle nut and then remove the castle nut or position it past the threads to aid in the ball joint removal. This will destroy the castle nut so you'll need to replace it but it will prevent damage to the ball joint threads. Any 12mm hex nut will do. You'll need a ball joint removal tool for the next part. Honda sells a special tool for about $200, but I bought this one from Harbor Freight for $20, and it does just fine. Be sure to check the video description for product links. Apply grease to the tool to ease installation and prevent damage to the pressure bolt threads. Slip the tool onto the ball joint, and rotate the pressure bolt until the ball joint comes free. Next, remove the ABS sensor harness by removing two bolts from the upper arm. Repeat these steps to remove the ball joint and ABS sensor for both sides of the vehicle. Now we're back under the car to remove the differential joints for each side. There are six mounting bolts and nuts to remove, and then you can remove the joint from the differential. This requires pulling the half shaft away from the differential to clear the internal rod. Disconnecting the suspension's lower ball joint allows you to have enough clearance to pull the half shaft out. With the half shafts out of the way, remove the evap canister cover by removing the single bolt holding it in place. Next, place a floor jack underneath the differential. A transmission jack is certainly ideal, especially if you're doing this by yourself, as you want to have a large platform to hold the differential. A simple floor jack will work, but it helps to have a friend assist with lowering. Starting from the rear of the differential, remove each of the four mounting nuts from the mounting bracket. Then remove the four bolts holding the front mounts in place. At this point, the evap canister was in the way so it needs to be hung down for clearance to remove the differential. There's a single bolt to hold it on, and then a bracket to slip it off and allow it to hang freely. Now that there's clearance, pull the differential towards the front of the car, which will clear the rear mounting bolts from the mounting bracket. Then lower the differential to the ground using a jack. Having a friend certainly helps here, but I'd really recommend using a transmission jack with a larger platform. With the differential removed, I went ahead and bought new mounts to replace the 15-year-old rubber. The old mount still functioned, but it seemed worth the money and effort to replace at this point. Each of the rear mounts has four bolts holding it in, which need to be torqued to 33 pound-feet. The rear mounting bracket has one center nut holding it in place for each mount, which will both need to be torqued to 47 pound-feet. Next I went ahead and filled the differential with oil. 
You can do this last if you prefer, but don't forget. I'm using a 75W140 synthetic gear oil as recommended by PuttyMod, the differential builder. However, Honda recommends using an API classified GL5 or GL6 SAE90 grade oil. You'll want to make sure the differential is level and fill until the oil starts to drip out of the fill port and then torque the fill bolt to 33 pound feet. Next, we'll put the studs into the differential. You can remove them from the old diff or get new ones. To finish up, remove the front differential bracket from the old diff and mount it onto the new differential. There are four bolts used, each torqued to 47 pound feet. Now the differential is ready for installation. Using a floor jack, lift the differential back up into the vehicle and slide it into the rear differential mount. These four nuts are torqued to 55 pound feet for the rear mount. For the front, slide the differential mounts onto the front mount bracket, in this case I'm using new mounts, and bolt the two mounts back to the frame, torqued to 33 pound feet for the four bolts. At this point, I hit another roadblock. The threads for one of the mounts was damaged, so I couldn't bolt on the mount. Because the nut is internally mounted to the frame, there really isn't a simple way of removing it. To fix this, I bought a tap set to repair the internal threads. This is a 10 by 1.25 millimeter thread. This certainly should not be something you should need to do for installation, but it's an issue that did pop up for me. Using a cleaning tool, cutting tool, and a 10 by 1.25 metric tap, I re-tapped the hole, making sure to align the tool with the previous threads, and then there was no issue mounting the bracket. With the front mounting bracket on, there are two nuts and washers that need to be installed and torqued to 47 pound feet. The differential is now securely installed. At this point, we're mostly reversing what we've already done. Replace the EVAP canister and the single bolt holding it in, then reinstall the canister cover, tightening the single screw to 7.2 pound feet. Next, we'll be installing the axle shafts to the differential. Using new hardware, install the 12 nuts and bolts to each side of the differential. You'll notice I've already installed the rear suspension stiffener, but you shouldn't do this until you've reinstalled the exhaust. Torque each of the differential bolts to 61 pound feet and mark each one after you've torqued it down to make sure you don't miss any. Use the handbrake on and off to allow for rotating the differential to torque the various bolts. For each rear suspension, reinstall the ball joints by torquing the castle nut down to 51 to 58 pound feet. The range is allowed because you need to make sure the castle nut is oriented so that you can slip the cotter pin through the ball joint bolt and then bend the cotter pin to prevent it from falling out. You may need to use a jack to get the ball joint back into the lower control arm. Reinstall the ABS sensor harness by torquing the two screws to 7.2 pound feet. Next, we're back under the car, installing the prop shaft back to the transmission. There are three spacers to be used and be sure to use new bolts for installation. Each of the six bolts needs to be torqued to 24 pound feet. Be sure to use a torque wrench to prevent from stripping the cap screw heads. Mark each bolt as you torque it to ensure that you get all six, and use the parking brake as needed to rotate and lock the prop shaft. Be sure the prop shaft protector is in place. Remount the exhaust, making sure all five hangers are used, and tighten the nuts to the catalytic converter to 25 pound feet. These are self-locking nuts and ideally should be replaced. Finally, install the rear suspension stiffener. There are four larger bolts which need to be torqued to 33 pound feet and two smaller screws which need to be torqued to 7.2 pound feet which hold the EVAP canister in place. Now we're ready to put the wheels back on and lower the car. Torque the wheel nuts to 80 pound feet, lower the car back down to the ground, and we're all done. I will include plenty of product and tool links in the video description as well as part numbers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.